remove the air box, you're first going to need to disassemble the engine bay, beginning with the strut tower brace, the air box, and all the other associated pieces. If you don't know how to do this, go ahead and refer to the video we already have. Link in description. Once you get the engine bay disassembled and you get the wiring harness out of the way, you can go ahead and start taking off the intake. We're going to start with this air filter. To get the air filter off, take off your MAP sensor. Go ahead and unbolt the, the air filter itself and come up on here. With the air cleaner off, you need to take this connector hose from the intake to the valve cover dust cover. We'll send them a picture of it. So with all that unbolted, you can take the air filter out and the intake. Voila. With the air filter out, you can go ahead and unplug your TPMS and then you need to loosen all the hose clamps. So the factory, these do not come with hose clamps. They come with what I believe are called Odiger clamps and they're, they're a crimp style. Um, and so you have to break the crimps off and then it comes off the same way, but it's not as simple as just loosening it with a screwdriver. But the reason they do that is because these tend to get um, if they're not if they're not rotated correctly, they can come in contact with your throttle linkage here. And if you have, say, this right here, when the throttle goes down, you'll see that it'll hit it right there, and it can get hung up, and then you could be stuck at like wide open throttle or partial throttle. And so it's very important to make sure that these are clocked out of the way when you put it all back together, that nothing hits these guys here along the way. Then you need to unbolt your dipstick and pull the vacuum line. When you get your dipstick disconnected, come down here and go ahead and take your power steering reservoir cap off. Because if you don't, you'll notice that your dipstick hits the side of the cap, but this just allows you to have a little more room to get it out of the way when you pull your manifold. With the dipstick out of the way, you can put the cap back on just to protect from dropping anything in there. Next, you need to remove the 10 millimeter bolts that are on this housing here and then a little further back there's another 10. The next there's a fitting similar to this one right next to that 10 millimeter right here I'm pointing at it. You need to remove that too. So to pull that fitting off you'll just pinch the sides and pull. So you want to remove your little weather strip seal here Pick this up and you'll see that there's a hook on the back side of the manifold right here that holds this. So get that out of the way, that way it doesn't catch when you're trying to pull your manifold. You also have a power wire going down to your starter. It's got a little bracket, it's got a little tab on it. Pull that up. That's a little tab that you just put your hand down there, peel back on that tab and lift up. Don't go very far because you'll snap it. So there is a solenoid down here and all this does is it's got a little rubber piece you just push it off of the little tab that it sits on. There's also a really tiny hose down there that we'll show you when we remove the manifold. When removing the air box out of an SMG car, there's some extra things you're gonna have to do. They namely have to do with the SMG reservoir that's on the air box. So there's a few different connections. One on the side here, which connects with this tube here, is just squeezed to pop it off. Then you have the reservoir connection itself for the SMG pump which is here. And for that one, you're gonna push up that clip to pop it loose. Then there's one here on the bottom of the air box, which corresponds to this connection piece here. And that one just pops out. Step with the SMG is to remove the extra fluid using a vacuum pump or a turkey baster out of the fluid reservoir. You're gonna to wanna to do that so that when you disconnect the hose, you don't get oil everywhere. So now it's just a matter of yanking the manifold off. Be, keep in mind that you have your clamps here, sometimes they'll fall down, but they're generally pretty easy to find. Uh, and make sure that this stud doesn't get stuck back in your dipstick tube as you pull it up. The little hose sometimes will disconnect itself, which it did here. And then this is where that little hose goes. 
but a lot of the time it removes itself when you lift it up. Do a quick check, make sure you don't lose any clamps. We didn't, so we're good. If you're enjoying the video so far, please use the links in the description when it's time to purchase parts for your car. Not sure what you need? Visit our webpage and you'll have access to categorized parts lists with instructional videos for your project. In doing so, you're supporting those who support Fat Boy's Garage. It's a quick, easy way to help us continue to create quality content that is going to help you with your own projects. We love our cars and we only use the best parts, which are the ones we recommend to you. We chose our supplier because of their amazing customer support and we are confident you'll be well taken care of by them.